What's going on guys? So we are at the 2024 Houston RV Show. We're taking a look at this really cool Ibex travel trailer. One of the reasons why I'm filming it is because it has a feature a lot of people ask about whenever I film travel trailers. They wanna know what are some of the benefits? What does a beast mode suspension package look like on a travel trailer? This one has it. There's some interesting things to kind of focus on. We'll talk about that. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So this unit is going to have a dry weight of 4,668 pounds. It's gonna be 24 feet, eight inches long, and it's gonna have a cargo capacity of 2,690 pounds. That is an absolutely crazy cargo capacity for something with a dry weight of only 4,800 pounds, which means if this thing is completely loaded up to GVWR, you really wouldn't wanna tow this with a half ton truck. You'd wanna tow it with something bigger. But if you don't load this thing up too much, if you're practical, if you only throw like a thousand pounds, 1500 pounds worth of weight in here, you could absolutely tow this with a half ton truck. Just be very careful because this is still very long. It's wide and it's tall off the ground, not just from a sidewall perspective, but that beast mode suspension absolutely adds height compared to a unit that does not have it, probably like four inches of height. So again, just be very careful. That said, a lot of people wanna know what's going on with this suspension. So this is an independent suspension system. It basically utilizes springs, shock absorbers, and just kind of a multi-link type of setup. It's a really, really good setup for going off-road. The challenge you have though, is you're kind of limited to what the RV is capable of at that point. So this suspension can do a lot of craziness that the RV itself can't. So you do want to be very cognizant of that because you want a super high-end upgraded suspension doesn't necessarily mean that the RV itself can do what the suspension is capable of doing. And in most cases it can't. So I would not recommend doing like extreme off-roading with something like this that you may be able to do with like a Patriot or you know some of those crazy off-road RVs that I featured in the past, especially the ones that are Australian inspired. This is just not designed for that. The box in this is still very much your typical RV box. So just keep that in mind. Asdell construction, which is really nice, which means you're not gonna get any type of delamination in the wall if it's designed properly or if it's assembled properly. But there's a lot to like here because the Ibex product is definitely unique. They do a lot of kind of interesting things, especially if you've seen the RV suite videos that I've made on kind of their mobile lodges. That said, um, you have some interesting mixes of super high end and then relatively affordable scissor jacks. So you have scissor jacks when on something like this, I think most people would want some type of either auto leveling or electric stabilization. But the reason why they would do this is because if you do take this to a scenario where it might be off kilter a little bit, this might be more practical in terms of leveling it and stabilizing it over your electric systems that might struggle. But that said, you got an electric front tongue jack. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the outside of these units, even though I spent quite a bit on this one. You have your outside griddle, which attaches to the wall. Up here, you have your water heater. It does not appear to be on demand. So you're gonna have a tank water heater in this unit specifically. Some of them are on demand. You have your more I'd step above steps, and this will take us into this 19 MSB. All right, so as we swing around, you're gonna see that this is a really cool design, right? Even the countertop surface right here, it's thermofoil, but it looks really, really nice. You have a Dometic two burner gas cooktop. You have a microwave down here, and I do not know if it's convection. It is convection, so nice upgraded conve convection microwave. You have your vent fan above, your cabinetry up here, as well as a really nice dark stained stainless steel single basin sink, upgraded faucet. This is really cool. Your TV's mounted right here. This is a very interesting take on the sleeping accommodations. You typically don't see a Murphy bed in a front access RV without a door up front. So typically a door would be like right here. And I almost feel as if this was designed so a door could go here. What I would have done was put a huge window here. If we're not gonna throw the door here, put a giant window right here, give you a lot of visibility out, even though it may not be on the scenic side of the RV. But that said, you have a sofa. This is actually a jackknife sofa, so you can make this flat and you can have maybe somebody sleeping there if you don't wanna drop the Murphy bed. You have the Murphy bed, storage on each side. You have your inverter controller over here, USB ports, power ports. This is a really nice area and the nightstands work out really well 
you know, whenever you have the bed down. Plus you have your table right here, which you can stow when you're not using it, or you can move it in front of your sofa, which also converts into a bed. So that's really cool as well. You have a lot of sleeping accommodations in here, considering that this is more of a couple focused unit has a tire pressure monitoring system that's included. I really love that. A lot of people that get into RVs that don't have tire pressure monitoring put it on their wish list, but then end up not getting it before there's some type of a tragedy. So I love the fact that they're actually including it with a lot of these newer units. You have a nice bar area here with a couple bar stools or bar chairs. That's really nice. Your TV, again, it's mounted in a really good position. So if you're sitting down at any of the seating areas, you can see it nice and, and well, that's cool. Coming this way, let's look at the price. So, $53,796, which a lot of people would actually say that's a relatively good price for this type of floor plan. $18,007 off, $35,000 for this unit. I think that is a really good value, especially considering the fact that you're getting an Asdell unit with beast mode suspension and a lot of really nice upgrades. You have the Furion 12 volt refrigerator freezer, which is currently on. You have a cool road vac, so this is a, a central vacuuming system, also very nice. You don't have any drawers in the kitchen, unless they're hidden behind a cabinet. They are, so you do have some drawers in here. I, am you know, probably would prefer just drawers, because this is like a two-step process versus a one-step process of just pulling a drawer out. I feel like something could have gone here as well. Maybe another window. I think this RV had the opportunity to have tons of natural light pouring into it, but the windows are all kind of small and it would have been nice to have much, much larger windows, especially a huge window right there. That would have been really cool. Even better if it's the acrylic dual pane window, even if it's just that one window, that way you can open it up. That large window wouldn't you have to, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about heat coming into the RV if you had it. It would just be a really great viewing area and you could just prop that thing up and have a ton of natural light pouring in. Coming to the back, you have a full bathroom with sink in it, which is really nice. Some of them don't have a sink in the bathroom, that's why I mentioned that. In the shower, you may have, oh, never mind, you do have the shower miser. So the shower miser is basically a means of recirculating your water until it gets hot so you're not wasting it, waiting for it to get hot. That'll change color to let you know when the water's hot and you're good to go. Nice medicine cabinet, small sink, well, big sink, small amount of surface around it. I almost feel this would have been better if they would have gone with the smaller stainless steel undermount basin sink and it would have freed up a good four or five inches all the way around the sink for toothpaste, toothbrushes, and everything else you bring with you. This has plastic toilet. I think there was an opportunity for a porcelain toilet there. But again, the price of this unit is pretty good. It's pretty aggressive. You have solar charge controller. I don't know if there's solar on top of this unit, but I imagine there's probably going to be some. You have a nice size closet right here with a lockbox. That's cool. You have a small heater right here as well, or furnace. And then you have more storage right here as well. So this is kind of your wardrobe slash pantry slash hanging storage. But what do you guys think of this thing? This is a pretty dang cool unit. And the price, in my opinion, is pretty aggressive. I feel even like five or six years ago, that would have been a pretty fair price, especially for an RV that has what this has with beast mode suspension. But I'd love your feedback. Leave a comment below. Only one air conditioning unit, but I think that's fine considering it covers this whole area, which is the primary living space. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below. I would love to know what your thoughts are. If you haven't had a chance, please hit that subscribe button. It lets me know you love me. It lets me know you like my content and hit the thumbs up. It lets YouTube know the same thing. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, Talk to you again from another RV.